Did you know that today, the 20th of July 2019, marks the 50th anniversary of one of man's greatest achievements? Thanks to Neil Armstrong and other astronauts, we have explored the space beyond our planet and successfully landed on the moon for the very first time. Despite making such a historic landmark a long time ago, it is so disappointing that only a handful of astronauts have been to space. However, this will change come 2020. Not long ago did NASA declare that it would be open to public space tourism as from the year 2020. And here is the sweet part. It will cost you a mere token of 35,000 US dollars per day. Pretty cheap, eh? Okay, aside the astronomical costs, let's face it, there are critical health challenges associated with the space environment that you must know before deciding on a long space tour. Stay tuned as I explain a recent NASA study revealing the manifold physiological hazards associated with long space mission. Hi, I am Tibi Tokbe Etibo. Welcome to Life Sci Exposition. It is a known fact that living in space is accompanied by noise, isolation, poor oxygen supply, disrupted biological clock, ionizing radiation, and microgravity. But what is not known is the possibility of having our blood vessels and DNA getting damaged as a consequence of the harsh environment of the space. To answer this question, a NASA study was conducted using identical twin astronauts. So, one of the astronaut twins traveled to space and was on board the International Space Station ISS for one year, which is also the approximate time required for a return journey to Mars. While his identical twin remained on Earth, biological samples from the twins were extensively monitored by state-of-the-art techniques that identified global changes in genes or protein expression and connected them to the activation of particular stress responses. This study revealed many molecular, physiological, and behavioral changes induced by the space environment in the traveling twin, which were classified into low-risk, middle-risk, and high-risk groups. The low-risk category included changes in the gastrointestinal microbiome and in body mass, whereas the middle-risk category included alteration in collagen regulation and intravascular fluid management. High risk categories include genomic instability, which could result in cancer. You see, ionizing radiation is an ever present threat to human life because it can damage our DNA. But on Earth, we are shielded from galactic cosmic rays by the Earth's magnetic field and its atmosphere. But the farther we travel from Earth, the more we get exposed to the cosmic ionizing radiation. Therefore, it was no surprise that the traveling twin displayed a high frequency of chromosomal aberrations that could only have been caused by exposure to ionizing radiation in space. Furthermore, telomeres, which protect the ends of our chromosomes, predominantly became longer or chopped in the traveling twin. Despite the fact that most chromosomes return to normal length post-flight, extremely short or lost telomeres persisted. This is extremely concerning. Another high risk changes observed in the traveling twin is blood vessel distension and neuroocular syndrome. You see, this syndrome is induced by the space environment due to microgravity. On Earth, we experience gravity and our body have adapted to it. But in space, microgravity leads to the feeling of weightlessness. Therefore, Body fluid would shift to the upper part of the body, resulting in carotid artery distension, thickening of the inner layers of the carotid wall, and causing pressure on the brain, which finally pushes on the back of the eye, resulting in abnormalities in the retinal vasculature, with choroidal thickening and increased choroidal folding, features that could potentially compromise our vision. The good news here is that, the cognitive capacity of the traveling twin did not show major deficits during space travel but revealed significant diminutions after returning to Earth. It is important to note that ionizing radiation dose rate on Mars 
would be five times more than the one experienced by the traveling twin on the International Space Station. Therefore, the implications might be far worse than was shown in this study. This experiment will serve as a good guide for future targeted countermeasures. Since it is the mission of scientists to tackle current and future challenges, we should be optimistic for a solution to these space travel bottlenecks in the near future. Now that you know of the risks of space travel, would you still like to go to Mars? If you like this video, check out my next videos on how scientists use frog skin to treat the flu and why sleep is good for you. Subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell for you to receive updates of new uploads. If you find this video helpful, like and share with family and friends. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn. Ciao ciao.